It is May 8th, 2023, and who boy do I need to talk. Today's topic, the NACS charging standard. As you've probably heard, uh, a week or so ago, well, almost two weeks ago now, Ford dropped kind of a bombshell announcement that they were going to switch to the NACS charging standard for their EVs. Uh, what is NACS? Well, it's Tesla's charging adapter hardware, the spec for their cable and their port that are used to plug a Tesla into a charging station to charge. It has only been called the NACS, which stands for North American Charging Standard, for about six months because that's about how long since Tesla introduced their proprietary charging cable connection as a standard. Um, They produced the documents required to make other people capable of using it, um, and they to my knowledge I don't think they necessarily went through any um, of the typical international bodies to uh, propose it and work through committees and all that stuff they just said here's our standard here's the specs anybody can use it so not a lot of people thought much of this it's oh wow it seems a little late for that yes Teslas are you know currently more than half the EVs in North America, and currently more than half of the usable fast chargers in America are Tesla chargers, but surely the momentum is to CCS because all the manufacturers other than Tesla are using it, and there are dozens of them, and they're coming fast and furious. You have to be moving to turn, I have found. So it seemed the die was cast that the United States and uh, Canada and probably Mexico would be using CCS, which in itself is is a bit of a bifurcation because over in Europe, they don't use CCS, they use CCS too, which, while largely the same, has a slightly wider um, AC part. Uh, So both the ports and the connectors are not compatible with each other between CCS and CCS2. So in a way, we already had our own little standard that was specific to North America, and I think maybe Korea. and um, so this idea that we would switch to Teslas is not that crazy. But I know, at least I didn't think it was even possible it would happen because none of the manufacturers are going to switch to it this late in the game. Well, Ford went there. And it'd be really, really interesting to know how those negotiations went. Who came to who? Who exchanged money with who? Um, I think in the long run, Tesla wins more than anybody. So I would be really surprised if it wasn't Tesla who came and said, hey, we got this crazy idea for you. It's going to save you some money and make your EVs more popular. And that's, you know, that's a good talking point for sure. Um, so Ford announced that, and, and, and still I was like, well, I guess that's going to lead to a bit of a split, and, you know, maybe Electrify America and EVgo and these other networks are going to have to expand the number of Tesla plugs they put in some of their charge locations. But it didn't cross my mind that it would become the standard. Well, today, I think we can say that it is going to become the standard because GM has thrown their hat into the same ring 
exact same um, information as Ford that they are going to gain access to the Tesla supercharging network through an adapter starting in 2024 and that in 2025 they're going to start building the, the NACS adapter charge port into their cars which is the same thing Ford said so I think there's it's highly likely that Ford and GM will be the number two and number three in, in which order I don't know but <laughs> the number two and number three sellers of EVs in North America by 2025 I don't think any of the other people coming in including VW even though they've made a really good push are going to sell more EVs than those two than Ford and GM and of course this is assuming GM actually produces Ultium vehicles which per my previous rants I'm not sure about yet time will tell anyway assuming they walk the talk Ford and GM will be behind right there behind Tesla and so that means the, the majority of EVs being sold in 2025 and beyond in North America will have the NACS charge port not CCS so they're going to win that's it right that's all There's nothing else really to talk about right Ah, well, there's a couple things. First of all, there's no story around bi-directional charging on NACS yet. Um, from what I can gather from reading the bits and snippets I've read, it's not like I've poured through the spec or anything. People are saying, there are people who say, there's nothing preventing bi-directional V2L or V2V or um, what's the other one, V2H, um, from being done with the NAX connector, um, just maybe a little trickier because the AC and DC flow through the same two pins on the NACS connector. So one has to be very, very careful not to be putting the wrong type of electricity into the wrong device. Uh, if the device is configured to accept DC and you send it AC, bad things will happen and vice versa probably as well. So there's that concern. But from a, apparently from a physical connector standpoint and from a implementation of standards standpoint, there's nothing preventing it. It's just that Tesla hasn't bothered to do it or try it or enable it in any of their vehicles yet. So Ford is a big proponent of vehicle to load with the Ford F-150. So, and they aren't speaking to what the NACS change means for that yet. So that remains to be seen. Uh, GM hasn't really had much of a vehicle to load story other than suggesting that they will have a way to do it with the with their pickups as well which they pretty much just have to say in order to keep pace with Ford so we can just hope that they do add that because that is one of the big promises of EVs that we can use them to help each other uh, when we're stranded and that we can use them to power our own homes in an emergency or to power a campsite when we're um, doing adventuring. So those are important things and I think we want to have them. And the other thing is what does it mean for the existing networks? Electrify America, EVgo. Um, because the protocols, the, the handshaking and everything, are largely, you know, there's, there's no problem there. They're, the, they're both the same between CCS and NACS. 
it shouldn't be too much trouble for uh, Electrify America and uh, EVgo to just switch their cables. So not too worried about them. And if they have anyone to blame for this state of affairs, it's themselves. Because they spent 2020 to 2023 sitting on their hands, not expanding their networks. Um, and maybe that was financial. They literally didn't have the money to do it. But for whatever reason, they didn't. And now this. And so Tesla's going to win this battle for the connector standard. They're going to win the um, fast charging, public fast charging race too, because they're much quicker to build out. And they apparently are could do it for a lot cheaper than the other players in the market. So they're definitely going to win that. We got kitties in the road. I don't like that. Okay, well, I have now talked. Whew. We'll see what all this means, but I hope it means more chargers, more reliability, more mobility, and those are good things. I almost forgot. The other big question mark about this is what is it going to do for EV adoption in the near term? So if this blows up into really big news and everybody knows about it, which everybody should. I don't think it should be something that they try to brush over that the standard for the charging connector in America, North America is changing. Will people just go, you know, well, I was going to get one this year. Maybe I'll wait till the 2025s come out with the new connector. So that could, that's, that's a real concern. Uh, that could definitely happen. Uh, the cynical part of me thinks that's maybe why GM jumped on board. Because it buys them time. So if they don't produce uh, hundreds of thousands of Ultium vehicles in 2024 like they're talking about, it, they can just say, well, you know, we demand was lower because everybody's waiting for us to switch to this. So we figured we should wait to, to ramp up. And it'll buy them another year of talking about EVs while out, without actually making them. I hope that's not what ha happens. I hope we continue to produce them in large numbers, sell them in large numbers. I hope there's so many sales that they have to consider doing retrofits. Uh, because, you know, having an adapter will be, will be fine if you have to carry a big bit of a brick of an adapter to plug into your CCS car to plug into a next NACS charger that's fine but um it, anyway I just it'll be curious to see what this does for EV adoption <laughs>